The term shunt, as applied to our discussion here, refers to blood flow between systemic veins, which carry deoxygenated blood, and systemic arteries, which should be carrying fully oxygenated blood, without participation in gas exchange. And shunt can arise from disease of the heart, the pulmonary vasculature, or the alveolar airspace. One of the key attributes of a shunt is that it does not respond to supplemental oxygen. So why is that? It's because the supplemental oxygen cannot reach the blood that's shunted past the alveoli. And the remainder of the blood that's not shunted is essentially already fully saturated, so the supplemental oxygen doesn't add much to that blood. Now, a small amount of right-to-left shunt, which we call physiologic shunt, is normal. And it results from certain vessels that supply the bronchi and the ventricular myocardium that drain their deoxygenated blood into vessels carrying oxygenated blood. So a little bit of shunt is normal, but right-to-left shunt can be increased in a number of disease processes. Total atelectasis, which you can see with a pneumothorax, or complete alveolar filling, which you can see in a severe pneumonia, both cause shunting by complete elimination of alveolar ventilation in some area of the lung that's still receiving blood flow. Hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction is gonna reduce perfusion to these lung regions, but blood flow is not completely eliminated, so some shunt occurs. Right to left shunt can also be increased by anatomic derangements, such as pulmonary arteriovenous malformations in which the blood bypasses the capillaries that line the alveoli. And these AV malformations can be seen in hemorrhagic hereditary telangiectasia, also known as Osler-Weber-Rendu syndrome, or the hepatopulmonary syndrome. And finally, right-to-left shunting can also occur within the heart, across a patent foramen ovale or an atrial septal defect, if the right heart pressures are elevated, which you can see in severe pulmonary hypertension, because if they're not elevated, the flow is going to go from left to right. So this was all right to left shunt, but in a left to right shunt, by contrast, oxygenated arterial blood is recirculated to the venous system and combines with deoxygenated venous blood. And this kind of shunt can occur within the heart through atrial septal defects or through arteriovenous dialysis grafts or AV malformations. And left to right shunt is constantly increasing the amount of blood coming back to the heart. So it can cause a high cardiac output state, which can lead to heart failure or pulmonary hypertension. But it does not cause hypoxemia because we're adding oxygenated blood to deoxygenated blood rather than the reverse.